Former Union Minister P. Chidambaram approaches the Supreme Court after the Delhi High Court rejects his anticipatory bail in the INX media money laundering case. In other headlines, in a significant milestone for India's moon mission, Chandrayaan-2 has successfully entered the lunar orbit after nearly 30 days of journey in space. The Prime Minister has congratulated the ISRO scientists. Also, an army jawan has been martyred in unprovoked ceasefire violation by Pakistan in the Mendar sector of Jammu and Kashmir. The Indian troops have given a befitting reply and destroyed several posts on the other side. Also, the National Crisis Management Committee, headed by the Cabinet Secretary, has reviewed the flood situation in several parts of the country. The flood situation is grim in Himachal Pradesh as well as Uttarakhand. Zakir Naik's speeches have been banned in Malaysia after he was reported to have made inflammatory statements and Nayak, as we know, is wanted in India on money laundering charges. Let's give you some sports news in the headlines and in the BSF World Championships, India's HS Pranoy has stunned the former world champion Lin Dan of China in round two. He's entered the next round. Let's begin this bulletin. Here's our main story. Former Union Minister and Senior Congress Leader P. Chidambaram today moved to the Supreme Court for relief after the Delhi High Court had refused to grant him anticipatory bail. This is in connection with the INX media case. And this case pertains to alleged irregularities in the Foreign Investment Promotion Board clearance to INX media in 2007. P. Chidambaram was the then Finance Minister. Well, according to the CBI and the ED, P. Chidambaram and his son Karthi Chidambaram received illegal gratification from INX media owners Peter and Indrani Mukherjee for the clearance. Indrani Mukherjee is presently an approver in this case. Chidambaram has contended that at the stage of the bail, the court uh, should not be looking into the merits of the case. He said that the court, in fact, needed to satisfy itself on three conditions, which are absence of flight risk, no risk of evidence tampering and accused being available for further investigation. The probe agencies opposed Chidambaram's bail plea. They said that Chidambaram was evasive and non-cooperative when he appeared for questioning in relation to the case. Now, Karthi Chidambaram, the son of Chidambaram, was granted bail in this case in the High Court last year. And the Home Minister, Amit Shah, has reviewed issues related to the final publication of the National Register of Citizens, that's the NRC in Assam. The review meeting was attended by the Chief Minister of Assam, also the Union Home Minister, or the Home Secretary, the Chief Secretary of Assam, other senior officers. Extensive deliberations have been held on the issue between the Home Ministry and the State Government of Assam in recent weeks. It was decided that in order to facilitate the persons excluded from the NRC, adequate arrangements will be made by the state government to provide full opportunity to appeal against their non-inclusion. So every individual whose name does not figure in the final NRC, they can represent themselves in either here his or her case in front of the appellate authority, which is the Foreigners Tribunal. And this is under the provisions of the Foreigners Act 1946 and the Foreigners Tribunals Order 1964. Only foreigners tribunals are in part to declare a person as a foreigner. Thus, non-inclusion of a person's name in the NRC does not by itself amount to his or her being declared as a foreigner. In order to facilitate the persons excluded from the NRC, adequate number of such tribunals are going to be established uh, at convenient locations. And it has been decided that the state government would also make arrangements to provide legal aid to the needy people amongst those who have been included from the NRC, as it may not be possible for those excluded from the final NRC to file the appeal within the prescribed time as well. So the MHA, what has it done? It has decided to amend the rules to increase the present time limit of filing for these appeals. The present time limit is 60 days. It's now been increased to 120 days.
story on the INX media case uh, with regard to the uh, former union minister P. Chidambaram uh, moving the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has asked him to file his uh, application tomorrow. Vikas Sarthi joins us on the phone line with the details. Vikas, uh, tell us, uh, so Mr. Chidambaram can only file his appeal tomorrow. Uh, right, Mark. Today, the registrar uh, went to the Chief Justice of India and uh, informed about the uh, about the prayers made by counsel for uh, P. Chidambaram. And uh, what we have learned from some of his uh, uh, counsels that uh, CJ today refused for any urgent listing. Uh, so it now uh, they have to approach tomorrow to the appropriate bench. Uh, tomorrow they may have mentioned this matter before another judge because the, the Constitution bench is hearing uh, their case. So it is very likely that this matter will be mentioned before Justice uh, Ramanna. Uh, who is not part of the Ayodhya matter. So uh, it is very likely that now this issue will be mentioned before Bench of Justice Ramana tomorrow. Okay. And uh, that means when it is mentioned before the Bench of uh, Justice Ramana, that means the case will be heard and uh, we have a conclusion to it, uh, you know, about the anticipatory bail tomorrow or what is the process? Well, uh, the procedure is not that this, uh, when Justice Ramana will uh, hear these prayers, then he will decide whether he should need any direction or not because Chief Justice of India has made a clear roster uh, for judges that what matter should be heard by which judge. Uh, so, uh, if Justice Ramana finds that, uh, that that bench is appropriate to pass any order, then uh, bench will hear bench will hear this matter. Otherwise, uh, he will uh, ask the councils to approve CGI for appropriate orders and listings. Uh, but all this will happen tomorrow. Now, uh, today uh, they were speaking an urgent hearing, but right. CGI said that uh, today it is not possible to take up this case now. The matter will be listed or maybe mentioned tomorrow. Right. And what has the High Court said uh, while uh, rejecting the ba anticipatory bail plea, Vikas? Well, well, Mark, the main reason is that at this stage, a uh, relief cannot be granted because investigating agencies argue that uh, if, they, uh, if they are allowed uh, to be on bail for an earth for uh, a time uh, in, uh, indefinite, then it will certainly okay. uh, compromise the the whole probe of, uh, by the investigating agencies and because of that such kind of relief cannot be granted uh, generally in uh, such kind of cases anticipatory bail is not granted because it's, right. uh, it, there is always a fear that the accused may try to influence the witnesses or sabotage with the uh, with the ev evidence uh, which are available. Thank you very much Vikas Sarthi for those inputs. Moving on to our next story. In a major milestone, to uh, this is for India's moon mission, Chandrayaan-2, the spacecraft has successfully entered into the lunar orbit. It happened this morning. The duration of the maneuver was 1,738 seconds. It began about two minutes past nine in the morning. And ISRO tweeted saying that the duration of the maneuver was 1,738 seconds. And with this, Chandrayaan-2 was successfully inserted into the lunar orbit. Following this, a series of orbit maneuvers will now be performed on Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft to enable it to enter its final orbit, passing over the lunar poles at a distance of about 100 kilometers from the moon's surface. Subsequently, the lander will separate from the orbiter and enter into a 100 kilometers into 30 kilometer orbit around the moon. Then it will perform a series of complex braking maneuvers to soft land on the south polar region of the moon. And this is all going to happen on September 7. Well, Chandrayaan 2 was launched on July 22 by GSLV Mark III M1 vehicle, and it had entered the lunar transfer trajectory on August 14. ISRO's chairman has briefed the media about the lunar orbit insertion of Chandrayaan 2. K7 said the Chandrayaan 2 mission has crossed a major milestone today. Chandrayaan-2 entered the lunar orbit at 9 a.m. He added that Chandrayaan-2 was precisely inserted into the defined orbit. Let's listen. Today, the Chandrayaan-2 mission crossed a major milestone. And the, the precise uh, lunar orbit uh, insertion maneuver carried out at uh, 9 o'clock for about 30 minutes precisely injected the Chandrayaan-2 in a defined orbit a perfect way. As we are aware, in order to achieve 
the, the required location for soft landing near South Pole, that is to achieve the moon orbit with the inclination of 90 degree. This is the unique requirement only Chandrayaan has, which no other moon mission has. Now, after the lunar orbit insertion today, the Vikram lander will soft land on the moon, as we said, on the 7th of next month. And the ISRO chief said that precisely at 1.55 a.m., the lander will land on the moon. On 7th, early morning, 1 o'clock and 40 minutes, 1.40, the, the powered descent starts. And next 15 minutes, at 1.55, the lander will be landing at a site 71 degrees south of equator, moon's equator, with a 22.8 degree east. After landing on the lunar surface, two hours later, the, the ramp, the, lunar, the ramp in the, the lander will come down and touch the ground. And then three hours, ten minutes, Later, the solar panel of the rover will be deployed and the 3 hours, 50 minutes, the, the, the lander will start move from the, uh, sorry, the rover will start from the lander and the four, at, team, uh, the, at 4 hours, the lander will be touching on the moon surface. This is our plan and I am sure that the, the precision with which our uh, LOI and the TLI we have carried out, I am sure that, that is, uh, we will be able to achieve the successful landing on moon on 7th by 155. And the ISRO chief said that he has mixed feelings currently, mixed feelings of happiness and anxiety. Everybody's uh, the, 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 the eyes will be the glued to the, the console and uh, only, the only thing is that uh, because of the advanced technologies, this, uh, the, the telemetry parameters will be, we will be seeing and uh, by continuously seeing these parameters, some parameters by itself will be showing that it is uh, we are in the right direction. This type of feeling we will get. So, at the same time, what going to be the next moment? That uh, anxiety also will be there. So it will be a mixed, mixed feeling of that uh, the, 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 the happiness and the, the, the tension and more anxiety that will be there. Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated ISRO on Twitter. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said, Congratulations to Team ISRO on Chandrayaan 2 entering the moon's orbit. This is an important step in the landmark journey to the moon. Best wishes for the successful culmination. The National Crisis Management Committee, the NCMC, it's chaired by the Cabinet Secretary P.K. Sinha, and it today reviewed the prevailing flood situation in the states of Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Uttarakhand, Haryana, and Delhi. The Cabinet Secretary took stock of the current situation preparedness, rescue and relief operations and directed the immediate assistance as sought by the states be provided to meet the crisis. As of now, 28 teams of NDRF are deployed in these states and resources from the Army and Air Force have been pressed into service. Additional teams are also on standby for any exigency. Also, the IMD had uh, in fact stated that while there has been a uh, very heavy rainfall in these states over the past few days. The intensity is likely to decline over the coming days. It was also directed to make available necessary financial assistance from the State Disaster Response Fund to the affected states. Senior officials of the Ministries of Home and Defense, as well as those of NDRF, NDMA, as well as Central Water Commission attended this meeting. Chief secretaries and other senior officers from state governments participated in the meeting through a video conference. The ITBP continues to undertake search mission in Tikochi, Arakot, Uttarkashi on the banks of the river Tones. 
This is after a cloud burst in the area a couple of days ago. The ITBP teams have started search operations for missing people in the area. Ten vehicles were reportedly stationed when the cloud burst occurred in the early morning. The situation in parts of Punjab and Haryana remains grim and it's prompted the Punjab government to declare the current flood situation in the affected villages of the state as a natural calamity. Now, the Chief Minister, Amarinder Singh, has announced 100 crore rupees for emergency relief and rehabilitation measures in the affected regions in Haryana, braving bad weather as well as low visibility in the wee hours of Monday. The Indian Air Force airlifted to safety nine members of a family, including six children, who were stranded in an inundated field near the swollen Yamuna in Karnal. Heavy rains over the past few days have resulted in flooding in some parts of the state. And here's an update from Jammu and Kashmir. The situation continues to remain calm and peaceful across the state with no major law and order incident being reported. Restrictions are being phased out gradually in the state. Jammu and Kashmir government has said that all the middle schools of the valley will be reopened from Wednesday. The administration has made every effort and every arrangement to see that the supply chains are well maintained. Also, the government has urged people not to believe in any kind of rumor mongering by vested interests. The JNK police has meanwhile warned that those spreading these rumors will be strictly dealt with. News from the neighborhood and external affairs minister S. Jai Shankar held talks with his Bangladeshi counterpart, Dr. A.K. Abdul Menon. It happened in Dhaka. He had arrived in Dhaka last night on a three-day visit to Bangladesh and he started his engagements by paying respects at the Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman uh, Bangabandhu Memorial Museum at the Dhan Modi area of Dhaka. Earlier, the external affairs minister said that India's neighborhood first policy uh, in that Bangladesh presents a model relationship. He said that our partnership has transcended strategic partnership and it has attained a new level. He also said that the purpose of this visit is to affirm a strong relationship, that strong relationship that exists between the two countries, also to prepare for the forthcoming visit of Prime Minister Hasina to India. The Union Defense Minister Rajnath Singh today attended a seminar on modernization and indigenization plans of the Indian Air Force in New Delhi. Addressing the seminar, the Union Minister said that the Indian Air Force is a technologically advanced and extremely potent force. He added that the IAF, besides the Army and the Navy, needs to keep base with the advancement of technology, enhancing operational capabilities. Air Force, besides the Army and the Navy, needs to keep pace with the advancement in technology for enhancing operational capabilities. Recently, while addressing the 20th anniversary commemorative event to mark Kargil Vijay Divas, our Honorable Prime Minister has emphasized the need for modernization of our armed forces. The Union Minister also reiterated the Prime Minister's emphasis on the efforts to increase participation of the private sector for the Make in India defense sector. Efforts are being made to increase the participation of the private sector for making India in the defense sector. However, it is a fact that India continues to be one of the largest importers of the defense equipment that is produced within the country. There is a sizable dependency on foreign original equipment manufacturers for their systems and components. The Air Chief Marshal B.S. Dhanua, while addressing an audience at a seminar organized by the Air Force, has said that the Indian Air Force can't wait for indigenous technology to replace obsolete warfighting equipment. The Air Marshal expressed his concerns on the seminar titled Indusem 2019 Modernization and Indigenization, a Pinus of Indian Air Force. No war. We cannot wait for indigenous technology to replace, uh, replace obsolete war fighting equipment. 
neither will it be prudent to import every defense equipment from abroad. So what are we doing? We are replacing our high-end obsolete weapons with indigenously developed ones. This will boost our in-house defense manufacturing. Now, businessman Ratul Puri, who is the nephew of the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Kamal Nath, has been arrested by the enforcement director. This is in connection with the 354 crore rupee bank loan fraud case. Puri was placed under arrest. This is under provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act late on Monday night. He will be produced before a court in New Delhi today. The businessman was summoned by the enforcement directorate in connection with the bank loan fraud case. A criminal case was filed in this instance by the CBI. It happened on August 18 and multiple raids were conducted against Puri. His, his father and Moza Bea firm promoter Deepak Puri, mother Nita Puri and others. He is already under probe scanner of the agency. This is in the Augusta Westland VVIP Choppers case. 17 BJP leaders, including the former Chief Minister and an ex-MLA, took oath as Cabinet Ministers of Karnataka at a simple ceremony at the Raj Bhavan in Bengaluru in the presence of B.S. Yadurappa, who is the Chief Minister. D the BJP leadership has attempted to balance caste and regional equations through the expansion that has come about after a delay of three weeks. A lion's share of the cabinet positions have gone to Lingayats, also the largest community in Karnataka. There are 37 Lingayat MLAs out of 105 members of the BJP MLAs. Now the new ministers are V. Somana, R. Ashok, Ashwat Narayana, S. Suresh Kumar, C. T. Ravi, Ishwarapa, Jagdish Shetter, Prabhu Chauhan, Shashikala Jole, Govind Karjol, B. Sri Sri Ramulu, Kota Srinivasa Pujari, H. Nagesh, J. C. Muduswami, Baswaraj Bommai, Lakshman Savadi, and C. C. Patel. Some international news related to India, of course. Uh, Zakir Naik, the Islamic preacher, has been banned for giving public speeches. He's been banned from giving public speeches in Malaysia. The Malaysian police said this, and they've said that this has been done in the interest of national security. At least seven states have already banned Naik's speeches. Masked Hong Kong protesters called the weekend's rally remarkable, where an estimated 1.7 million anti-government demonstrators braved heavy rain. They rallied peacefully, marking a change to what has now been seen as violent clashes. Now the masked protesters, what have they done? They've added that, uh, no, that what China did, uh, they were determined to fight for their beliefs. As uh, we move on now to the sports news, and this time the ace Indian shuttler H.S. Pranoy has bounced back from a game down, and this is against the 11th seed Lindan, who was also the world champion for a very long time, and he's booked his place in the third round of the ongoing BWF World Championship 2019 in Switzerland on Monday. After comfor comfortably winning the first game, the 27-year-old failed to capitalize on the same and went down in the second before rebounding strongly and ultimately sealing an 11, I beg your pardon, a 21-11, 13-21, 21-7 win over his Chinese opponent, veteran player Lin Dan, in a thrilling second round clash that lasted a little over an hour. And with that, we conclude this bulletin. Thank you for being with us. Namaskar.